I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll try to understand different methods which could be used to find maximum or minimum of a quadratic function. Question here is explain different methods that could be applied to find the vertex of the quadratic function given in standard form. As an example I've taken this equation h of t equals to minus 5 t squared plus 15 t plus 20 that's a very useful equation and we'll have similar ones when we study projectile motion right so every time you have to find the maximum height of the projectile reached and the time when it reaches so this method can be applied there and solve to solve the application problem now first method which always comes to our mind is completing the squares and undoubtedly that is probably the best way to go about right since it gives you time and also the maximum minimum in the same equation right away so let's do completing the squares now in completing the squares we actually take the first two terms and factor out the constant right so constant here is minus 5 and what remains is t square minus 15 divided by 5 is 3 t and then we'll write this constant of the equation kind of separate next step is we have to find half of this number so we're trying to make it a perfect square so we can make it a perfect square if I add and subtract half of 3 in this case so half of 3 is 1.5 so I can add and subtract 1.5 that is how we can complete a square right as you can see the first three terms t square minus 5t plus 1.5 square forms a perfect square and that could be written as t minus from here and then 1.5 whole square minus 1.5 whole square so what we can do is we can use calculator and find what is 1.5 square equals to that is 9 over 4 let's write it in decimal numbers 2.25 plus 20. Now we can open the bracket so we have minus 5 times t minus 1.5 whole square minus and minus becomes plus and we can multiply 2.25 by 5 so we get 45 over 4 which is 11.25 so that is 11.25 plus 20 now we can add the constants and we get our equation the equation is minus 5 times t minus 1.5 whole square plus when you add them you get 31.25 now clearly the vertex point is at t equals to 1.5 so we can write down the vertex from here which is 1.5 and if I write t as 1.5 the first term will be 0 so h of t will be 31.25 so at 1.5 the value of the function is 31.25 now we need to decide whether it is a maximum or a minimum that is done by the leading coefficient minus 5 so coefficient of t squared is negative it means it is a parabola which open downwards kind of like this do you see that and therefore the point which we're talking about the vertex represents a maximum do you see that so in this case we do have a maximum so that is how normally we should do but there are alternate ways of solving this at times uh, alternate methods could be used right so let's look into those one of them is partial factoring the other one is factoring now factoring in this particular case we can always do let us do it by factoring first since this equation can be factored remember you cannot factor each and every equation and that is why factoring method doesn't always work now if I factor minus 5 what am I remained with t square minus 3t and that 20 will become minus 4 and that gives us minus 5 we're looking for two numbers whose product is minus 4 and sum is minus 3 so the numbers are t minus 4 times t 
20 plus 1 correct so that gives you two factors rather two zeros now the zeros are at or the x intercepts you can say zeros are at x equals to 4 and x equals to minus 1 average of these two values I should have written t since the independent variable is t the average of these two gives us axis or symmetry so axis is at t equals to 4 plus minus 1 divided by 2 which is equals to 3 divided by 2 or 1.5 so we get the same value of t and so we get the same value of the maximum do you see that so that is one method which you can always use the other method is partial factoring now partial factoring is actually a very good method but students normally uh, are not very aware of it and that's the reason why I don't really see it being used but you will appreciate once I do it how easy and good this method is so let's begin with our equation which is minus 5t square plus 15t plus 20 now in partial factoring it works always since you know you don't have to factor the three terms you can factor the first two and that is the reason why we call it partial factoring so if I factor the first two I can take minus 5t as a common factor for the first two terms we are left with t and here we are left with 3 and plus 20 now this is this gives you two points if t is 0 that means the y intercept is 20 but the y intercept value of 20 you can get at t equals to 3 also that means on this parabola which I kind of let me sketch it again I'm just utilizing the space so what I'm trying to say here is that let me draw this dotted since most of the time t is always greater than 0 well we're not really solving that problem but in any case uh, let me just sketch it kind of like this what we're trying to say here is if t is 0 in that case y intercept is 20 but if t is 3 even then it will give me height of 20 same height so the axis of symmetry is going to be right from the center of this correct so if I find v mean value of these two I get the axis right so from here after partial factoring we know that two points which are symmetric we say the y intercept and the image so this point is referred to as image let me write in a different ink here to make it clear to you this is called image of y intercept and that is a y intercept known to you right so center of this gives you axis so we'll write axis in this case should be equal to 0 plus 3 these are the two values divided by 2 which also gives you 1.5 as the value of t the same value of t as you can see so that is the third method so once you find this value you can also substitute the value 1.5 in your equation in h of t and you know h of 1.5 is indeed equals to 31.25 so so you get maximum value of 31.25 so these are three methods which can be very effectively used to find maximum or a minimum of a quadratic function so I'll encourage you to use different methods for solving different questions I hope that helps I'm Anil Kumar you can subscribe my videos and learn a lot about quadratic functions thank you and all the best